What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, we have some very, very interesting news regarding four division world champion, Mexican superstar Basa, who is currently the undisputed super middleweight world champion, widely considered by many to be the face of the sport of boxing, top five, top three best pound for pound fighters in the world, in Saul Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez is 57 wins, two losses, two draws. 39 big wins by way of knockout. He is uh, 30, 31 years of age, five foot eight with a 70 inch arm reach. With that said, Cinco de Mayo weekend, May 7th, Canelo Alvarez, he lost um, his um, second fight at light heavyweight for a world title. He won the first time at light heavyweight against uh, Sergey Kovalev back in 2019. But this time he took on undefeated WBA, light heavyweight world champion, Russian superstar boxer, Dimitri Bivol. And uh, Canelo Alvarez, he got outclassed in the fight, period, okay? Uh, so with that said, you know, uh, everybody wonders, what's next for Canelo Alvarez? The excuse for Canelo Alvarez was used that Dimitri Beaver was just simply too big for Canelo Alvarez. Dimitri Beaver is now uh, uh, 20 wins, no losses, no draws, uh, 11 wins by way of knockout. He's six feet tall with a 72 inch arm reach at 31 years of age. Uh, his technical skill set. Uh, his ability to box, utilize the ring, ring IQ, and things of that nature was what won the fight for Dimitri Bivol, not just uh, his size, okay? Um, but everybody used the, the the reason that he lost is because of the size of Dimitri Bivol. Uh, he also lost um, pretty much every single round except for, with the exception of three. Uh, this is the second time we saw him get outboxed and outclassed like this. We saw him do so uh, September 2013 when he took on legendary retired Hall of Fame iconic superstar boxer Floyd Money Mayweather. With that said, everybody wonders what's next with Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez has now yesterday announced that he will be facing off against uh, two-time unified middleweight world champion superstar boxer Gennady Triple G Golovkin in a trilogy. They fought twice, okay? First fight ended in a draw. Second fight ended in um, Canelo Alvarez being a victor. And now they're going to fight a third time September 17th, okay? Uh, so with that said, um, another fight at 168. Now, uh, this is going to be Gennady Golovkin's first fight uh, above or below 160. He's never done so, okay? Now he's going to fight Canelo Alvarez, challenge Canelo Alvarez for his undisputed titles at 168 right they're familiar with one another so he's going to challenge him at 168 with that said uh there's another guy at 168 that has become the mandatory for canelo Alvarez, and that's undefeated wbc two-time super middleweight world champion mexican ecuadorian superstar boxer david benavidez okay david benavidez is now uh 26 wins no losses no draw 23 wins by way of knockout he's 25 years of age six foot one with a 75-inch arm reach, okay? Um, David Benavidez just beat David Lemieux to become the WBC interim, regular, however you want to uh, uh, describe it, champion. He's the mandatory for Canelo Alvarez. Now, many people have been calling for Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez for quite some time, and the fight just never came to fruition. Many people, including David Benavidez and his team, father, trainer, and manager, Jose Benavidez Sr., they felt like Canelo Alvarez strategically moved around fighting uh, David Benavidez, okay? Uh, you even had legendary, former undisputed world champion, retired Hall of Fame iconic superstar, and Iron Mike Tyson, he nicknamed David Benavidez the Mexican monster, okay? So with that said, uh, David Benavidez is the man to beat. Now, when David Benavidez held, held the WBC title at super middleweight, Canelo Alvarez wasn't eager to get in the ring with him. It didn't seem like it was a plan for him to go and fight and face off against David Benavidez, okay? Uh, or to become undisputed in that weight class. It just didn't seem like it was an option for him, okay? Well, with that said, now uh, David Benavidez had lost his belt on the scale, okay? He dominated David Lemieux in his last fight, stopped him in three rounds. But prior to that, he had lost his belt on the scale. He missed weight and the WBC stripped him of his title. Immediately, um, Canelo Alvarez opted to fight for the vacant WBC title, and he tried to do so against Abney Durham, his former sparring partner that was on a two-year layoff and coming off of a loss to Anthony Durrell. But that was turned down, okay? So he ended up fighting uh, undefeated WBA uh, super middleweight world champion, British superstar boxer, and Caleb Smith, okay? 
Uh, he faced off against Kalen Smith for Kalen Smith WBA title and the vacant WBC title was on the line as well. Okay, so they fought for um, both belts, right? Then Canelo Ives beat Kalen Smith, then he fought Billy Joe Saunders. He beat Billy Joe Saunders for the WBO, and then he fought and beat uh, um, Caleb Plant for the IBF. But that's how he got the WBC title. Well, now David Benavidez is the WBC mandatory challenger. And guess what, Canelo Alvarez, according to WBC World Boxing Council President Mauricio Suleiman, the board of 32 members, that Canelo Alvarez is going to use his franchise title. Okay, Canelo Alvarez is looking to use his franchise title so that way he don't have to face David Benavidez. Okay, so David Benavidez is the mandatory. Now, Canelo Alvarez was franchised at middleweight, so he didn't have to face his WBC middleweight mandatory challenger and undefeated two division world champion who now is currently the reigning WBC uh, middleweight world champion Jamal Lyons only Charlo he was franchised that's the first introduction of the franchise belt to the world of the sport of boxing okay and so with that said he was introduced uh, uh, um, to the franchise right now fast forward okay Canel Juarez from that point hadn't used or just talked about being franchised, okay? There was no discussion, there was no talks of Canelo Alvarez being a franchise champion or anything of that nature. There just wasn't, right? But now, the WBC president, Mauricio Suleiman, is saying that Canelo Alvarez has informed him that he could possibly be using the franchise so he don't have to fight David Benavidez. This would allow Canelo Alvarez to move how he so chooses and then the wbc president says canelo alvarez does what he wants nobody tells him what to do this is what mauricio suleiman stated nobody could tell canelo alvarez what to do he's earned that right he's gonna fight who he wants where he wants and that's the reason why the franchise title was in, in, in introduced and created to begin with so now david benavidez has become the, the mandatory challenger canelo alvarez defends his titles against gennady golovkin if he's successful against Gennady Golovkin, as I expect him to be, I expect Canelo Alvarez to dominate Gennady Triple G Golovkin. So if he's successful against Gennady Golovkin, right? Then they're telling us that he don't have to defend the title against David Benavidez, who's more than well, more than uh, uh, um, deserving of having this opportunity to fight for his title. He missed it. He missed. He lost the title. He missed weight. During the pandemic, one of the first fights back during a global pandemic, and he missed weight on the scale. And so Canelo Juarez picked up his belt and now is going to hold it. And David Benavidez is not going to be able to find a way to get it unless Canelo Juarez vacates. This is a huge fight for Canelo Juarez. OK, this is a huge fight for the sport of boxing. David Benavidez, his, he's trending everywhere. Okay, Mike Tyson nicknamed him the Mexican monster. This is a huge fight. He dominated David Lemieux. He's calling out Canelo Alvarez. And now they're saying that Canelo Alvarez, he beats Gennady Golovkin. He's going to be fran he's going to use the franchise to avoid fighting David Benavidez. Wow. Now, there's talks that Canelo Alvarez is looking to go to um back up to light heavyweight should he beat Gennady Golovkin. Uh, at the end of the year to rematch Dimitri Beef, okay, at 175. It's not, it's a bad style matchup. See, here's the thing. There's always going to be a built-in excuse should Canelo Alvarez lose to Dimitri Beef, as everybody's going to continue to tell you that he's just daring to be great. So if he loses to Dimitri Beef again at 175, well, he's going to get a pass. He's just daring to be great. But if he loses to David Benavidez at 168, there is no such thing as daring to be great. You lost to the better fighter, and that's what they don't want. See, the built-in excuse when he lost to Can uh, Floyd Mayweather was he was too green. Although he had 40 fights, five title defenses, and unified the belts before he fought Floyd Mayweather in a massive fight with Austin Trout. And Austin Trout was considered top three uh, junior middleweights in the world. He unified against Austin Trout, a slick southpaw who was undefeated and a world champion, and beat Miguel Cotto for the belt. He unified against Austin Trout, had five title defenses and 40 fights by the time he fought Floyd Mayweather, who was 36 going on 37 years of age. But they tell you he was too green. Now he fought the smaller man moving up in weight and he lost every single round. But they tell you the reason was because he was just too green, okay? 
uh, he has questionable wins against Eraslan Dilara, right? But they dismiss it because, well, the judges saw him the favorite, even though he won a split decision. And I thought Laura won the fight, as many people and most people in Boston world thought Laura won the fight. Okay, then he had two questionable fights with Triple G, right? And then the fight with Dimitri Bevel. But if he loses to David Benavidez, right, there is no built-in excuse. There is no rhyme and reason as to why you lost to David Benavidez, but David Benavidez being a better fighter. But if he goes up once more and dares to be great and fight Dimitri Bevo and loses, right, well, he dared to be great and he'll get a pass to go back down and things of that nature. No, he won't get a pass. He loses to David Benavidez, Demetrius Andre, Jamal Charlo, David Morrell, the likes of those guys. There's no pass. There's no built-in excuse. And so the hype train is over if he loses to one of them. So now he's going to lose his franchise to avoid fighting David Benavidez. Amazing. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hit like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share these videos. That's all I got for you. Peace.